Remember this paper released close to a month ago? It caused quite a stir by asserting that while open source models can mimic the style, they fall short regarding factuality. But that's not all. A 51 page report on Orca based on a relatively modest 13 billion parameter model also surfaced later. Now, we don't usually talk much about open source models because they can't compete with the might of OpenAI's models, but Orca is a whole different story. It holds its ground against GPT 3.5 and surpasses it in several well-established benchmarks. Shockingly, it even matches GPT-4 in a couple of reasoning tests. After thoroughly studying both papers, the excitement doesn't end there. We've also gathered some fresh off the press comments from renowned experts Sam Altman and Ilya Satskova regarding the growing competition from open source models. Their perspectives shed even more light on this captivating development. However, what truly piques our interest is that Microsoft conducted all the spectacular research behind Orca Intriguing, right? Don't worry, there's more on that later. So why did they create Orca, and how did it surpass models like Llama, Alpaca, and Vicuna? Stay till the end to find out. Orca, the 13 billion parameter model, was developed to address the limitations of smaller models like Llama, Alpaca, and Vicuna. These models lacked thorough evaluation, leading to an overestimation of their capabilities. Orca was designed to mimic the reasoning abilities of larger foundation models LFMs, by studying the step-by-step -step thought process of GPT-4 and receiving guidance from ChatGPT. It surpasses Vicuna by over 100% in complex zero-shot reasoning benchmarks, it outperforms ChatGPT in the Vicuna evaluation set, and it matches TextDaVinci 3 in exams like SAT, LSAT, GRE, and GMAT. But what about the thinking process? There's more on that later too. Remarkably, these achievements were attained without needing a chain of thought or advanced methods. A release of model weights is planned following Llama's release policy, although leakage on the internet is anticipated. But amidst the excitement, a question lingers. Will Orca's smaller size and its ability to narrow the gap with large language models on complex reasoning tasks revolutionize the field of AI? Fascinatingly, Orca's 13 billion parameters make it around 7% the size of GPT-3 and 1-2% to of the size of GPT-4, enabling it to run on smaller devices. The paper subtly criticizes the claims that model limitation is a false promise, asserting that Orca can narrow the gap with large language models LLMs, on zero-shot benchmarks requiring sophisticated reasoning. Now, Vicuna, claiming 90% of ChatGPT's quality, struggles with reasoning tasks. Orca achieves a score of 36% in logical deduction, matching ChatGPT, despite being significantly smaller than ChatGPT4, which excels in casual judgment. But how did Orca manage to rival its larger counterparts? The answer lies in an ingenious approach employed by the researchers. The researchers leverage query and response data from ChatGPT and GPT-4, such as Taka and Vicuna, and they incorporated system instructions to prompt step-by-step -step thinking in these models. This allowed Orca to develop detailed explanations of the reasoning process, making the parent models more effective tutors. When compared to other models, Orca benefited from a significantly higher number of examples provided by ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4, with 5 million and 1 million examples respectively. The inclusion of explanations and step-by-step -step thinking distinguished Orca from other models, the researchers demonstrated how other models learned from their GPT parents using a simplified question and answer format, while Orca imitated comprehensive explanations prompted by system messages. The researchers emphasized the importance of balancing prompts and tasks during fine tuning. Now, what if I told you that Orca, a significantly smaller language model, achieves a logical deduction score on par with ChatGPT, despite being overshadowed by the upcoming GPT-4, renowned for its casual judgment capabilities? How did this compact model surpass expectations? Orca's ability to learn from detailed explanations contributed to its superiority over other open source models, surpassing proprietary models like Palm 2 Bison. You may wonder why they didn't solely use GPT-4. Now, aside from cost and time considerations, the researchers found that incorporating ChatGPT or GPT 3.5 as an intermediate teacher helped bridge the capability gap. By leveraging ChatGPT as a teacher, Orca became smarter and more capable of learning. It can be likened to a progressive learning, where the model learns from easier examples before tackling more challenging ones. Subsequently, they provided outputs from GPT-4 to further enhance Orca's training. 
Interestingly, if they skipped the intermediate teaching assistant, ChatGPT, and only trained on the 1 million examples from GPT-4, Orca's performance decreased, averaging 37%. However, its performance improved to 41.7% with the intermediate teacher in place. Regarding training time, it took approximately 200 hours to train Orca using 20 A100 GPUs. Regarding training time, it took approximately 200 hours to train Orca using 20 A100 GPUs. While data collected from ChatGPT and GPT-4 took a few weeks, if they plan to open source Orca, as they mentioned, this step could be skipped by the wider community. Now, let's examine additional results. First, focusing on an open-ended generation rather than multiple choice tasks, Orca receives 95% of ChatGPT's quality and 85% of GPT-4's quality as evaluated by GPT-4. However, there is a concern when using GPT-4 as an assessor. It was observed that GPT-4's evaluation tends to have a positive bias towards the response of the first model in the comparison set. This aligns with the findings from an unfaithful reasoning paper, highlighting the unreliability of GPT-4's reasoning. To provide more objective assessments, they moved on to multiple choice questions, which reveal the challenges even for advanced language models. Now, these tests are quite challenging, explaining why GPT-4 scored only 40%. Throughout the evaluations, Orca consistently outperforms Vicuna significantly and remains highly competitive with Text DaVinci 3. Nonetheless, it's important to note that Orca still lags behind GPT-4 overall. Keep in mind that these evaluations are conducted in a zero-shot manner. The percentages mentioned represent the improvements over Vicuna, the second best open source model. So far, we have focused on human-centric benchmarks such as GMAT and GRE. Now, Let's explore a benchmark specifically designed for language models called Big Bench Hard. The original Big Bench consisted of 207 tasks. Still, due to the remarkable progress of language models, they narrowed it down to just 23 challenging tasks, where human raters still outperform the models. Interestingly, when chain of thought prompting is added to the models, their performance improves even further, and there are fewer tasks where humans excel. It's really crucial to remember that these 23 tasks are among the most difficult for language models. Still, the trend is clear. Orca significantly outperforms the previous best open source model, Vicuna, and even surpasses ChatGPT on average. However, it still falls behind GPT-4, except for a few specific tasks. There were also additional evaluations conducted on various tasks. One task involved tracking and matching timings, where Orca performed well while ChatGPT struggled. All four models were also tested on a common sense reasoning question about hanging clothes to dry, which could be manipulated using prompt engineering to achieve high accuracy. The authors acknowledged that these results should be seen as a baseline, rather than as a definitive measure. It's important to note that Orca has been trained in a zero-shot setting with standard prompts, and its performance in other contexts such as multi-turn conversations, in-context learning, few-shot learning, and advanced prompting techniques like Smart GPT or Chain of Thought remains untested. The authors also highlighted potential avenues for improvement, such as tool augmentation. They mentioned a recent paper demonstrating that larger models can create tools that smaller models can use more efficiently resulting in significant performance improvements across tasks. As discussed in the Let's Verify step-by-step -step paper, process-based reward models could further enhance Orca's performance. Even so, it should be noted that the model is currently not open-sourced and is intended for research settings only. Although, this may not necessarily prevent wider use in practice, the fact that Microsoft conducted this research is particularly interesting. Speculation suggests that it may be related to a leaked memo from Google, highlighting the challenges of training giant models from scratch and the potential for iterative open source improvements to dominate over time. This research by Microsoft could be an attempt to explore the feasibility of imitating large models cost effectively, which could potentially impact future investments in new giant models. Amongst the leaders of OpenAI, Ilya Satskova and Sam Altman, there are contrasting views regarding open source models and the company's future direction. Ilya Satskova believes that the gap between open source and non-open source models is widening. 
While he acknowledges the possibility of open source models eventually reproducing something like GPT-4, he does suggest that proprietary models developed by companies will always be more powerful, and that the gap between open source and proprietary models may even increase over time due to the increased effort and resources required to develop such models. He sees the production of advanced neural networks as predominantly the domain of companies rather than that of small groups of researchers. On the other hand, Sam Altman expresses a different perspective. He emphasizes that OpenAI's uniqueness lies in its ability to envision and shape the future. Altman argues that the We Have No Models document, which suggests the challenges of reproducing proprietary models, misunderstands OpenAI's role. He asserts that OpenAI's strength lies in its capacity to determine what comes next and to generate and execute innovative ideas of various sizes, leading towards superintelligence. Altman also implies that even if open source models catch up in certain aspects, OpenAI's focus is beyond replication and instead on driving progress and pioneering breakthroughs. These different viewpoints highlight a nuanced discussion within OpenAI about the role and future of open source models and the distinctive contributions the company aims to make. To the open source versus non-open source models question, you don't want to think about it in, in binary black and white terms where like, there is a secret source that will never be rediscovered. What I will say, or whether GPT-4 will ever be reproduced by open source models, perhaps one day it will be. But when it will be, there will be a much more powerful model in the companies. Watch these videos as well. Hit that subscribe button, like, and drop a comment to let us know your thoughts.